Hello, and today I am so excited to announce another 10X Ladies Speaker. For the 10X Ladies event, the Power Players Edition, of course I bring you none other than the most fabulous Sharon Lecter. She is known as the financial literacy expert. She has advised two US presidents. She has co-authored the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Sharon's newest title, Exit Rich, was published in 2021 to support entrepreneurs in building value and scalability in their business so they can be in a position of great potential. We are so honored to have Ms. Sharon Lecter. She will be speaking about assets are sexy. She will help us, yes, all of us, improve our finances and get on the path to financial freedom and creating a legacy for generations to come. Mrs. Sharon Lecter, hello and welcome. What an honor. I am so excited for these women to be able to hear you speak October 2nd and 3rd at the 10X Ladies Power Players Edition. What a, a tremendous honor. I know you're going to be talking about assets are sexy. Yes, they are. And the older you get, the sexier they become. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just tease them out a little bit with what's to come. But you know, I wrote down a couple of my own personal questions here. All right. Um, so what do you think the top three tips about money are? Well, number one is, you know, too many times women put their head in the sand when it comes to their financial situation. They either give it up to an employer or to a husband or a partner, and they don't pay attention to their own financial health. And so I want people, women, to stand in their own power and figure out that they have the ability to create financial independence on their own, which is what Power Players is all about, coming together, women helping women. You know, and secondly is not, you know, is we've been trained through school to exchange time for money, a paycheck, a commission, right? And I want to just, I want to get, blow that thought out of your brain and say, instead of spending your time for money, let's invest your time mm. to buy, build, or create assets. My favorite word on earth, assets, you know, assets that generate income, and that's where you end up with financial wealth, financial independence. And one of the greatest assets there is, is real estate, right? So understanding that you can build a business, you can have stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, you can get into real estate, you can have intellectual property, what you know, share what you know, and something that people will pay you for 24 seven, that's an asset. And women mm -hmm. have the opportunity, we're, we're, we're all experts, nobody's been, had our successes or our learning opportunities, just turning that into a business so that you can earn income. Mm. And the extra income when that business is cash flowing, then you turn around and you invest it in real estate. You invest it in paper assets so that you build this foundation of financial worth, wealth. And that's for yourself and your family. Because when you're just starting out, do you plan to work until the day you die? No. Or do you plan to do something that creates financial independence so that you get your time back? You know, everybody answers B, the second one, but very few people do it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, too many times we put our head in the sand. This is number three. And by putting our, your head in the sand, you mean by non-confronting, like, yes. like women don't confront it? Why do you think they don't confront it? They're afraid. They, we grew up at a time when we heard things like, money doesn't grow in trees, pinch your penny, save for a rainy day, mm -hmm. right? All those things have one thing in common, they're negative. Mm -hmm. So as children, we hear money negative, money negative, money negative. No wonder we end up developing this mindset of scarcity. Yeah, and don't talk about it. That's right, we don't talk about it. And so we're always afraid we're never gonna have enough. And then when you start having a little success, that mindset makes us feel like, oh my gosh, we're going to lose it. Totally. And so, so until you address the mindset and realize we do live in a world of abundance and get rid of that and, and really just looking at it and analyzing it, you can understand where it came from and then you can almost laugh it off and say, okay, get rid of that thought process. We do live in a world of abundance and figure out where you are financially, even if the picture is bleak. It is empowering because at least you know where you are. Mm -hmm. 
and then you can plan how to get to the next step. Oh man, that's brilliant. So what would be the biggest mistake that people make with money? <laughs> um, <laughs> Amongst the many. <laughs> I think the biggest mistake when it comes to money is that they think about the money and not the impact. So when you know you talk about building an empire, you're yeah. focusing on impact mm -hmm. and the money comes. Mm -hmm. And so many people are chasing the almighty dollar, giving it power. Because at the end of the day, you're either in control of your money or it's in control of you. And the vast majority of us, con money controls us and we give up our power to the money. And what, how do you mean money controls us? Because we're always working for it? We're afraid that we're gonna lose it. Mm -hmm. We're afraid, we, we've gotten ourselves into bad debt. And so that debt is chasing us. You know, we're, 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 we put our head on the pillow at night and we're afraid we don't know how we're gonna pay our next bill. Um, we've just bought the new shoes, but we don't know, the bill hasn't come in yet. And we start worrying about that. And then you're afraid somebody's going to repossess your car. So that money is, is, is mm. consuming us, that mm -hmm. fear of loss. And so I want to give women the power to be in control of their money and understand that they can create the life they choose and the, and the life that they deserve. I love it. Do you think that some women are scared that... Uh, that they meet resistance within the household if they want to take financial responsibility for themselves and like create independently a security for themselves. Do you think that a lot of them are afraid to do that because it would create conflict at home with the spouse? And, and then how do you address that? How can a woman create this financial independence for herself but yet coexist and, 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 and not interrupt the bond that she has with her spouse or her partner. I think it's a huge issue right yeah. now, Elena, huge, because- Because they don't want to seem like they're individuating, but yet they want that empowerment feeling mindset thing. So go ahead. Yeah, yeah. How do they do it's it? It's a huge issue right now because there has been a huge transition. Mm -hmm. Women now are the primary breadwinners in 54% of households. Wow. And in, and in married households, over 30%, the woman is the primary breadwinner. Wow. And so you're seeing a lot of social change within, that, within the family unit because the woman is becoming more financially capable. But in addition to that, you know, w women are inheriting $20 trillion in the next decade. Women already control more than 51% of all personal wealth in the United States. And so it's something we have to realize that with that, we have a responsibility mm -hmm. to understand money, mm -hmm. understand how to earn it, how to invest it, how to save it, how to make it grow, and how to create the future for uh, our future generations. And so part of it is within that married unit, all right, I mean, I have a husband, my husband and I, we had to go through that process because he would have just as soon I stayed home, you know, and took care of the kids. And yet I had this earning to do that as well as to create my own financial independence. And so it's, it's communication, it's dialogue, and it's, you know, what happens in a, in a marriage is not so much a woman wanting to do something and make money, but the husband feeling that fear of loss. Mm -hmm. Or like that, in, like, like he's being dominated or that's something. Right. Yeah. That's right. And it's a huge issue. And so it's all about communication and finding that dynamic that works within that married unit. You know, my husband and I work together on a lot of projects and it's something that you, um, I share all the time you know we've been married 41 years Ooh, you know, congratulations said, thank you thank you and i <laughs> thank said you, you know service <laughs> we have tremendous respect for one another yeah all right and um i people always say well what's the secret to a long marriage mm -hmm. and i said well we have as much respect for each other as we have love for each other mm. because when the love gets challenged which mm -hmm. it does, does it does you know sometimes more often than not the respect steps in mm -hmm. and helps you get through the tough times mm -hmm. and it's something that uh, you know time and time again because we're human we're going to have those issues and and some a lot of them are about money when you're you know, 50 percent of divorces are related to um wow financial issues. And so it's really important to be able to have that communication. When I have a young couple that's coming and they're getting married and I'm talking to them, I say, go out on a money date, all right? 
and at that date, talk about how your parents thought about money mm. because it's going to end up in laughter because your parents have different philosophies about money and you're bringing those philosophies into your household. And so it's better to address them up front and, and, and know say, what you're dealing that's with. That's right. And so how are we going to deal with this? So for instance, my, my in-laws are still with us. They're 95 and 92, right? They've been married for 73 years, right? Wow. My father-in-law has every penny he ever met. He's such, you know, he just holds on to it. He won't spend a dime. That's that generation. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And my parents, who were also from the Depression, they worked very hard. But my dad said, you know, if I want something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a way to get it, wow. right? And so they both same generations, but do total different philosophies about money. Mm. And it's important to understand that because we aren't being taught about money in school. Mm -hmm. And so we're learning it at home. Mm -hmm. Hence, you hear the term, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Mm. And so if we truly want to level the playing field for every child, we will require and insist that money is taught in school because we want every child to have equal opportunity. Mm. But if they're not given the chance or the information, how can they move forward? And that's why the rich learn it at home, the poor learn it at home, and that's why they stay in these, these silos of not being able to find that path to financial independence. Was that how you came to co-author The Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Was it, um, did you draw on your background for that? I grew, up the in a, concepts. Yeah, I grew up in a very entrepreneurial home, mm -hmm. Elena. In fact, I lived in a little tiny house between my mom's beauty shop and my dad's used car lot. Mm -hmm. And we had rental properties. That at I was a real estate investor at 10. Ooh. I had to go scrub out bathrooms between tenants. And I swore I would never be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be this sophisticated professional. So I was first generation <laughs> to go to college, got my degree in accounting, one of the very first women in public accounting back in the mid-70s. And... Um, loved it. I was, you know, young, single, CPA in Atlanta, mm. right? Living life. Loved every minute of it. But at the ripe old age of 25, I'm going, I'm working these incredibly long hours. At the time, I felt pretty old. Um, long hours for someone else. So at 25, my parents started looking a whole lot smarter, right? I'm going, oh, they knew what they were doing. And I did not realize for many years that I was raised with information that helps me and how I focus on money that the vast majority of people don't get because they are all about getting a good job mm -hmm. and you know staying in that job, having that loyalty, Doing getting the American that paycheck. Dream. And it's like my message to people, it's not what you do for your paycheck, it's what you do with your paycheck mm. that determines your financial future. Mm. And But it wasn't until... You know, I started my entrepreneurial journey at 25. I started a woman's magazine, sold that. I started the ch kids' talking books that had the little sound strips. I started oh, I that love industry. That. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah 1987. That it, is it was amazing. the first technology kids had. Believe it or not, dinosaur days, I know. But um, we, we had this technology and we said, how can we get parents to trust us? And so I learned so much about business. We aligned with little companies like Disney, Warner Brothers, Sesame Street, Marvel Comics, and allowed us to take that all over the world. And we sold that company and as my husband and I moved to Arizona and our oldest son went off to college. This was in 1992, left in September, came home in December in credit card debt. We didn't even know he had credit cards. He got to campus. Mm -mm. He got to campus and there was a table greeting Oops. him. Free pizza, free money. Another table, free t-shirt, free money. He had a really good time his first semester in wow. college <laughs> with all that free money. Free pizza. <laughs> and then he realized that oh, wait, he somebody, had to actually, somebody actually pays for this. Yes, yeah, yeah. I actually have to pay. And so that was December of 92. And I was really mad at him, but I was more mad at myself because I thought I had taught him about money. I yeah, just hadn't, right. we didn't have credit. He didn't have credit cards that we knew of. And so that was December of 92 when I dedicated the rest of my career to mm -hmm. financial literacy, financial education, and entrepreneurship education because I realized that more and more, it's like people don't get it. They don't understand the importance of assets, mm -hmm. right? I don't even think they know what assets are. No. What is, can you briefly tell us what an asset is? Because some people think a house is an asset. 
yes. Well, your house is not an asset unless you're renting it out to someone, right? Because, yes. you know, is it feeding you? Assets, I give my technical definition. Okay. Assets feed you. Liabilities that. eat you. Ooh, right? man. <laughs> I'm writing that one down. Okay. But assets are something that you own that become an economic engine that generates income for you. Where you are the receiver of the income, you're not, you put the work in to create, buy, or build that asset, but then it becomes an economic engine and working for you. How many assets can you own? As many as you can get. Mm. How many hours can you work? Well, you're limited to hours in the day and days in the week. You know, so it's all about understanding the power of leveraging yourself. Mm, so good. The power of what you can do to create something that can stand apart from you and help other people 24 seven, allow them to access it so that they can create um, and find the information that you share. Cause we're all experts, right? Nobody's had your successes. Nobody's had your learning experiences. I want people to understand that whatever you've been through then you're an expert in that. You're an expert. And okay. you, you can become the authority and you can help others going through the same thing. Because mm -hmm. we've all had things that stopped us in our tracks. Mm -hmm. And yet you're still here. You're mm -hmm. still here for a reason. Mm -hmm. So you can help other people that are going through that same experience. Wow. Beautiful. Well, <clears throat> last question, because you know, I know you're you've got so much am amazing content to share with us. So I have to save it for the 10X Ladies event. But the last question is, what could someone do today to help themselves uh, start the journey of financial freedom or looking at the world? How can they help themselves financially? Like it's a great right question. Now? Great question. So we are all where we are today. Come to the tax ladies. <laughs> yes. We are all where we are today because of the choices we made before today. Mm. So if you want something different out of life, mm. you simply start making different choices today. And one of those choices can be to come join us at 10X Ladies, October 2nd and 3rd. But more importantly, make that choice that you're gonna take control of your life. Mm. You know, so many people you know, think, well, I'm waiting for the light at the end of the tunnel. And I go, stop it. That means you're giving up your power. You're waiting for someone else to bring you the light. Stand in your own power, become your own beacon of light. Mm. And as you do that, you will become magnetic and other people will come to you because mm. of that you're taking a stand to improve yourself. And that's so important. And that's why this event is so important because we're, sh we're demonstrating women supporting women coming together. It's not a, it's not a competition. It's a collaboration mm. of supporting women to stand in their own power and not to the absence of men. Right. I'd like to share this right. because one of the reasons I wrote Think and Grow Rich for Women was I was so tired of all these mm. women complaining and criticizing mm. about all the men that stood in their way. Right. All right. So my, my, my philosophy is women have, we've come a long way. All right. Do, is there more work to be done? Yes, of course mm -hmm. there is. But let's celebrate the progress we've made mm -hmm. and let's celebrate the men that have helped us along the way. Totally. Because law of attraction, do you think we're going to get more help and more progress by complaining and criticizing? And using no. them as an excuse? No. Right. No, let's, let's celebrate each other. Right. Let's celebrate how far we've come and let's celebrate the men that have helped us and we're going to attract more positive results. Oh, I agree. So the 10X Ladies event, you will leave here empowered to live in abundance in all areas of your life. So hopefully we see you at the 10X Ladies event. I can't wait to hear you speak there. The Power Players edition, it's really about women empowering women, helping them reach heightened levels of success, a collaboration, I love these words you use, collaboration of women globally who are willing to step up own their power as a woman and go into their communities being the beacon of light standing and creating their own light and sharing it with the world to make this place a better place absolutely making a Beautiful. difference for the better Beautiful. so thank you and thank you so much i'm thank so you, happy to I, have you oh. mm -hmm. thank and you join us we're waiting for you yes <laughs>